I found this old Seth Thomas clock. It does not work. I thought it was a very unusual uh, design to it. And I'm going to see if I can figure out how to fix it. The first step on the back, we have four screws here. Uh, let's take them out and see what it looks like. I've removed the four screws, but I can't remove the set knob from the stem, so I can't remove the back. But if I slip the wire through this opening, I can rotate the back. That will allow me to try to grab the stem that goes to the set knob with a vice grip, and maybe I can unscrew that. Let me set up for that. Okay, I have the vice grip. I'm going to grab the stem. And what I found with a lot of these old clocks is the set knobs are on, it's a reverse thread that is rather than righty tighty and lefty to loosen it's the other way around so i'm going to try to rotate this to the right to loosen it and we got it okay I'll have to take a closer look to figure out the uh, what order I have to take this apart. What I'm seeing, and I don't know if you can see it as well, is there's a nut on this side holding it here and here, as well as some bent tabs on the inside that looks to me to be what's holding the whole mechanism into the faceplate. And I think if I take off these nuts and bend up these tabs, everything should come out. And we'll find out. First, I'll remove the two nuts. And there's a washer with it. Next, <clears throat> I'm going to pry up the tabs and see how how easy it is to get everything out. It's going to take a couple of minutes to bend up all of these tabs properly. So let me do that and then we'll come back. So I've bent up all of the tabs. There were two, four, six of them. And what I've noticed is that what the nuts on the side did was it held these little side pieces in position. So I can remove that. And now I'll see if I can sort of tease this out of here.
There you go. One thing I noticed right off the bat is it's a very unusual piece of glass in the front of this. We'll put that aside. Okay. One thing I discovered in researching this particular Seth Thomas clock is that based on the numbers that are printed on the various parts, this clock was built in 1947. Uh, and what I want to do next is remove the hands. They're on with a friction grip. They're usually very tight after being on for so many years. So I spray some WD-40 into a little cap and apply just a little bit of it around the uh, stem that's holding the hands. And I'll let that soak in for a good 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll come back. The hands have been soaking now for several minutes. We should be able to pry them off. I should also mention that the official name of this clock is the Seth Thomas Baxter Electric Desk Clock from 1947. Just pry up the hands with a little screwdriver. Like that. Usually the second hand is the hardest to get off. Well, I stand corrected. I'm having more trouble with the hour hand. I may have to reapply some of the WD-40 around it and give it a few more minutes. So we'll do that. We'll see how that does. Okay, I've given the hour hand a few more minutes. Let's see if I can pry this off now. Oh, here we go. Okay. Now we'll take a close look at the mechanisms to figure out which way to take this apart. And this is a good spot to take a, start taking some pictures so you know what this looks like when you're trying to put it back together. What I notice is that if I move this little indicator, I can lift this gear out, which I'm going to do so it doesn't fall off when I'm turning it over, because I need to figure out the best way to remove with the, the whole mechanism from the plate. So let me ponder that and then we'll come back. First, I'm going to take off these three nuts. And then we have some washers under it. 
One, two, three. And then what looks like a thicker washer. Which seems to stay intact, but I can lift the whole thing out. Here we go. Okay, the next step is going to be to try to get the motor out from this part. I think to do that, I have to take off these four screws here. Okay, now we'll lift off the plate to see what we have. And time to take a photo. Something to note is that each time I remove a piece, I would plug the clock back in to see if it's running. So far, it has not run at all. I did notice that although I could freely turn the hour and the minute hand, I couldn't budge the second hand. Uh, once I removed this piece, I tried again plugging it in, and obviously it wouldn't work because this is part of the whole power circuit. But with this piece off, the second hand, when I attached it, I was able to freely rotate it. That let me look more closely, and I discovered the gear inside of here quite gunked up with old oil or dust, whatever. And I was able to remove this and just clean the inside here, clean this up, lubricate it a bit with some synthetic clock oil. And when I placed this back into position, the second hand not only was freely spinning, but when I plugged it in, it was working. So at this point, I'm just going to clean up the gears as best I can. I don't have to disassemble this any further, I think. And then we'll get back to putting it together. I've cleaned up the gears and we're ready to reassemble the clock. Uh, one interesting thing to note is the difference between a Seth Thomas clock and the older Hammond clocks. Uh, the Hammonds use an oil-filled rotor. Looks like this. And the output gear is what spins because of the magnetic field that's created. And over the years, the oil in this would gunk up, freeze the rotor, as well as leak out and get all over the gears. Restoring a Hammond clock, you need to take the entire thing apart and clean all the gears thoroughly. What I've noted with the more modern Seth Thomas clock, if, if you want to call something from 1947 more modern, 
instead of having the oil filled rotor, it uses what to me it looks more like a flywheel type of a gear. And when this is set into the housing where the magnetic field is created, there is no oil to leak out, which is why when I opened it up, it was really very clean, just a little bit of dust and debris deep inside, which once I got rid of, then the clock began to operate. So at this point, we will reassemble the clock. Okay, if you recall, I have the two screws here and two screws here holding that little metal bracket. I'm going to put those in and then we'll come back. I've put in the four screws along with the bracket. Uh, the next step is to attach the mechanism to the front plate. And now I have to tighten with the three nuts and the washers. We'll do that and then I'll come back. The next step is to reattach the dial. Before we do that though, I have to reposition the gear that we took off from the front. and I have to bend these little tabs back down to secure it. So I'll do that and then we'll put the hands on next. Now I position the hands starting with the hour hand. and the second hand. Okay, the next step is inserting the clock mechanism back into the wooden case. I noticed on the wood case that a couple of pieces were loose in a corner. So using some wood glue, I uh, glued it together, tightened it up with a few rubber bands, gonna let this sit overnight. Another product that I used for the wood is called Howard's Restore a Finish. This is what it looks like. And it does a great job of taking out any blemishes, scratches, uh, color imperfections in wood. And it really brought up a nice luster on, on it. I also use Noxon, which is a metal polish for the brass or side pieces, as well as the trim and on the faceplate trim as well. So that should look pretty good when everything is done. The glue is set. I can remove the rubber bands. And the next step is to put the front face plate on. Turn it over. And now we're going to fit the clock inside of it. The first step is putting the glass back in. And now we'll fit in the clock. Okay. 
Now I have to rebend all the metal tabs here to hold it all together. That'll take a bit, so let me do that and then we'll come back. I folded all the tabs down and secured the clock inside the case. I placed the nuts and the washers on the inside and the outer plates as well. Everything is nice and tight. And the next step is to secure the back plate. You have to tuck the wire in. The plate goes on. We have to replace the set knob. And if you recall, I have to rotate the plate in order to grasp the stem and fully tighten the set knob. That'll take a little bit of maneuvering, so I'll get it open and then I'll show it to you. I've got the plate rotated. Grab the stem, and again, turn to the left to tighten. And then rotate this back. Good. And now we put the four screws back in. And that should complete the job. The four screws are in. Let's plug it in and see if it works. There you go. The Seth Thomas Baxter desk clock from 1947.